Uh, but first, uh, Mr. Chris, uh, I'm not a lawyer, uh, like uh, all all the uh, my colleagues here now, uh, nor nor a careful lawyer like you singled out, uh, huh? Mr. Allen. All right. Um, I'm going to be suffering okay, for that. Okay, so one for but a while. I did some research, and most Americans aren't lawyers. Um, <laughs> So I got a question on the roving wiretap thing, and I think I, I understand why it's important, because uh, uh, the, the terrorists and other people who suspect of being terrorists uh, use different phones, right? Yeah. And, <clears throat> okay, and that's why it's there. Uh, but the, under the Patriot Act, uh, the roving wiretap provision does not require law enforcement officials to identify the individual or the phone or the computer that will be tapped. Is that, is that right? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. The, the statute requires, roving or not, that the government identify, provide the identity, if known, or a description of the specific target. A so, description of it, but not the actual... Not person. always the name, but you have to say something about the specific target. Okay, well, that, that's what brings me to this, because they give you this when you get in the Senate. It's a constitution. <laughs> and I was sworn to uphold it. Uh, or, or support it anyway and protect it. It says, uh, this is the Fourth Amendment, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Now, it seems to me that's pretty explicit language, and I was wondering if you think that this is consistent with the Fourth Amendment. I do think it is, and I kind of want to defer to that other third branch of government. Um, the courts, in looking at... I know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sir. It's surreal. Um, the, the, the courts, um, prior to FISA... Yeah. Sorry. Prior to FISA, every court of appeals to squarely consider the question had actually upheld warrantless foreign intelligence surveillance that is without an advance court order. And uh, the Supreme Court had declined to hold that a warrant was required in the so-called Keith case for foreign intelligence surveillance. So I think you begin with that baseline. FISA then, by requiring advanced judicial approval, goes above and beyond what the Constitution requires for this kind of foreign intelligence surveillance. I do think there's a, a, an argument, and a, probably a good argument, that the language that I read to you before, that even if you cannot identify the, the particular target, but that you describe the specific target, that it would satisfy the particularity clause that you just cited. Okay. Well, uh, thank you.